I liked it just the way it was, and I... One more time, let's give it up for our youth today. Reverend Latham mentioned to me as he watched our dancers. He said, you know, we have a U.S. Congresswoman who started in this church dancing. And today, and, and we're just grateful because there's so many possibilities that exist with our youth. And it is my prayer that we would be at least a source, an instrument that will nurture their talents and their passion to pursue their talents. And more importantly, what they said today, each one of them as they came to the podium, is they talked about all of the things that they are interested in. Uh, they talked about things that they enjoy, that they like to do. But they said, what I really want you to know about me today is that I love the Lord. And Prince, you did a wonderful job reading the scripture. I realize that today is Family and Friends Day and that we have, it happened to have fallen on a fifth Sunday and fifth Sundays are Sundays that we often use to allow our youth to guide us in our worship. So those two things uh, coincided and, and we're grateful for that uh, song. I never would have made it without you. How many of you can say that's your testimony? We're just grateful to God for all of you who are present today. I know there are many birthdays that are coming in the month of July, so we want to pause and say happy birthday to all of the July baby babies. Uh, we have them representing over here, so we thank God for the July babies. They'll start tomorrow. I also want to uh, recognize um, Sister Al and Barbara Harrison. They will be celebrating their 48th wedding anniversary on Tuesday. Stand up, please. God bless you. God bless you. 48 years. I believe um, it was Brother Al who had a friend, and I, I was uh, visiting in the hospital, and um, the, the gentleman told me, he said he and his wife had been married for 49 years at that time, 49 years. And he said seven of them were good. <laughs> I said, so you had, you had one year, one good year out of every seven. He said, you're good at math too, young man. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I know that you never could have made it 48 years without God on your side. And so we thank God for his faithfulness and uh, blessing you for 48 years come Tuesday in marriage. So what I'm going to do is, how many of you just ready for a word? <laughs> Need a word today. So I'm going to ask you to pray with me and pray for me. I have a, a message that I believe God has been just uh, germinating in my heart and in my spirit. And I've prayed that it would be all that God has ordained it to be. And I'm going to ask you to join me in a word of prayer. Father, we come into your presence with thanksgiving once again for keeping us this week. We've been through a lot. 
Some of us were extremely blessed and excited about some of the experiences. And some of us had some experiences for which we were challenged. But through it all, we know that you're in control. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray, dear God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, that it would be acceptable unto you. And let your word go forth to your people and accomplish the purpose for which it is being sent. I pray fervently and ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today from the passage of scripture that was read in your hearing, I want you to journey with me into a story that happened long ago in a faraway land where there was a man by the name of Nabuchodonosor Usa. Nabuchodonosor Usa. Nabuchodonosor Usa. See, you, you, you need to know that name. He was a king or ruler, or some would call him a conqueror. But his parents, they called him Nabuchodonosor Usa. See, you, you say it, Nabuchodonosor Usa. It's not that. You, if you met him, he would say, hello, my name is Nabuchodonosor Usa. He was, he was proud of his name because even though you might find it hard to say it, no one could say it like his parents could say it. Nabuchodonosor. And the reason that they called him this is they wanted to name him something that was important to them. As a matter of fact, when Mrs. Abu Alar Usar told Mr. Abu Alar Usar that she was pregnant, he said, I'm going to have a boy. And I'm going to call him Nabuchodonosor. Usar. And she said, well, how do you know it's going to be a son? He says, because I'm who I am. I'm a general in the army. And I can tell the cells what to be. I'm going to tell them to be a little boy. And sure enough, he had a son. And his son came out, and they called him Nabuchodonosor. And the reason that they named him Nabuchodonosor is because that name means protect my firstborn son. Now, he was a... He, 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 was, he, was, he was a special child, so much so that when he was born, his parents had all of these great dreams for him. So they enrolled him in these schools. See, they, they put him in the best private school that money could buy. And he studied military acumen. He, he understood sociology. He studied architecture and, and agriculture. He was skilled in these sciences and these disciplines of governance. He, he had all of these skills. And so to put these skills to use, what he did as he got older is he became the ruler of this country. And to expand his country, he started conquering other lands. Even though he went to school, he was a bright student. He mastered many sciences and disciplines. There was one subject he didn't do so well in. He did pretty good, but I believe that he may have barely passed his religion class. Because when he went to this one country and he conquered the country, uh, the, the, the people that were there had a different kind of faith. And so he brought them to his country and he tried to convert them. As a matter of fact, he looked out when he went, because I, just, I know he had to study sociology, because he said in every country, in every culture, there's going to be some haves and some, oh, you all been studying too. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to go to the part of town 
that has the haves, the royalty, and I want you to collect as many of those young men as you possibly can, and I want to bring them here so that I could teach them. So they went out and they conquered this particular country, and when they brought the people back, he found that there was quite a few, as a matter of fact, I think it may have been like 300 or more of these young men who demonstrated very uh, bright futures academically. And he says, I want to put them in my school. And, and he brought these three, actually it was, it was four, and he said, uh, what is your name? And he says, my name is Hananiah. He says, what is your name? My name is Mishael. He says, well, what is your name? He says, my name is Azariah. And he says, okay, from now on, you will no longer be called Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. I'm going to call you Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And, you know, because they were young, they kind of looked at each other. And um, they said, well, sir, what is your name? My name is Nabu Kadura Uzzah. And they looked at each other. They said, mm-mm. They nodded. They said, we're going to call him Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> he going to change our name? We're going to change his name. And as a matter of fact, when I write my book, I'm not even going to tell him what his parents call him. I'm just going to call him Nebuchadnezzar. Y'all ever heard of Nebuchadnezzar? Yeah. Have, you ever heard of, her, have you ever heard of Nabu Kudura Usar? <laughs> Daniel said, he ain't going to know no Nabu Kudura Usar. He want to teach us our name, we're going to change that name. So he changed the name. So, so what happened is he, he said, okay, I want you all to go into my, my school, and I want you to study all of the subjects that I have studied. And they put him in with the other 300 or so students. And then as they started to study, the king noticed that there was something special about this one, no, it was two, three, no, it was four. He, he wanted to pick one person, but he couldn't quite make up his mind. So he said, all four of these guys, they are bright. They have bright futures, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick them. And he called them, and he says, now I want you to be over here because you have demonstrated extraordinary skills. I'm going to put you, Daniel, I'm going to put you, uh, Meshach, and Shadrach, and Abednego, I'm going to put you all over here, and I want you to study. So he assigned a guard to watch them and make sure that they did their homework. And so they used to like to play, but when they got together, they said, man, I don't even like this place. The girls smell funny. The food is jacked up. And they looked at each other, man, what's that, what's that garb you got on? Look at your haircut, man. Your haircut don't look nothing like it did back home. He said, look at the clothes you got on, man. Those clothes don't look nothing like where we grew up, man. Where they take you to get them clothes? And them shoes. <laughs> they was laughing. But, but they played around, but they were very serious about their studies. So when it was time for them to start studying, the king put a guard over him. He said, now listen. I want you to make sure you take extra good care of these gentlemen because they are bright, they're brilliant. So he said, all right. So the king, so I know he had architecture because he had his own gardens and he had his own, he had his own uh, food. And, and so he said, the king told me to feed you all this food. Man, they ate that stuff. He said, do we have to eat this? He said, the king told me to feed you this food. This is top-notch sushi. You eat it. He said, man, we, we, we can't do this food. This is, this is not what we normally eat. And he says, I tell you what, I can't let you change your diet because if you show up not looking as good as the others who are eating the king's food, <laughs> king gonna cut my neck off. So he said, man, I tell you what, we'll make a deal with you. You have to guard us, right? He said, yes. He said, we're going to ask you just to give us some green beans, some broccoli, some corn, just, just, just some, 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 some vegetables. And, and after 10 days, if we look pale or we don't look as good as the other folks who are eating the king's food, then you, you make your own decision. You give us whatever the king tells you. But if we look good, can you let us eat our own food? He says, deal. Ten days came by. Guard came, looked at him. He says, you all look better 
than the folk who's eating the king's food. He said, we told you that. Just let us eat the vegetables. And so they did. So it was time for graduation. Three years come by. They studied everything. And the king said, it's time for promotion. I like out of all of these 300 and something gentlemen who are boys who are go going through my school, I like this one right here. No, I like two. No, it's just give me all four of them. I want Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and I want Daniel. So they all came in, and the king promoted Daniel so that Daniel was over. And now, I got to tell you, the king, when he conquered all of these nations, he had all of these cities. But I'm going to tell you, his greatest city out of all of the cities, he had, he had all the cities. But the one that he loved, the one that he liked the most was called Babylon. Woo, man, if you went to Babylon, my first time going to Vegas. I remember going to, and I, I went to Vegas with my wife. So, yeah, my, my wife was with me when we went to Vegas. And, uh, and so, and we had a good time in Vegas. But we, we saw the lights, and, and we saw the statues, and, and we were, it was just amazing. Well, that's kind of like what Babylon was like. Babylon, it, like... I grew up in Wilmington, but Babylon was nothing like Wilmington. Babylon was just phenomenal. And so the king loved Babylon. It was the place that he had gardens and buildings and statues and temples. And it was just phenomenal. You would have walked, you would have been just overwhelmed if you had gone to Babylon. So he, he, he loved Babylon. And so when he put Daniel, guess what? In charge of Babylon. And Babylon, since Daniel was in charge of Babylon, Daniel said, well, if I'm going to be in charge of Babylon to make this thing work, I'm going to have to have my homies with me. So let me put uh, Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego on the staff, and I want them to be working along with me. So the king says, you got it. King was thinking one day, he said, you know, Babylon looks good, but it would be nothing like having maybe something familiar to like Twin Towers. Something to express the grandiose uh, business and, and wealth and income of Babylon. So what I'll do is I'll build me a huge golden image. And I remember something about my religion class. There was a god called Murdoch or something like that. I'm going to have everybody to come and bow at the golden image at the same time. And I'm going to tell them that when they bow at the golden image at the same time, they've got to worship Murdoch. And we're going to have them to worship Murdoch. And so they put this decree out. And sure enough, when the flute started, when the music started, started going down. And you know, I said, ain't nobody going to tell me nothing. Can't nobody. I mean, I mean, you know, it was, uh, uh, they, they had the music going and, and when the music started, you could, you could just see everybody coming to the golden image. They were, they were at the golden image and, 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 and they would bow down and, and then there was just these four guys who would never bow down. And so they came to the king, they said, king, did you not make a decree that when the song started playing and the music started playing, that everybody had to come and bow down? I said, yes. He said, well, I got to tell you, there's four guys that refuse to do it. He says, bring them to me right now. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, I gave you guys everything. Is it true that I'm hearing you refuse to obey my orders to bow at the golden image? Give an account of yourselves. And I'm going to tell you that if you don't answer this issue right, you will be thrown into the fiery furnace. And I'm going to burn it up and turn it up seven times hotter because you ought to know better. Yeah, yeah. Right. He said, King... The God we serve is able to save us from the fire. And he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods 
or worship the image of gold that you have set up. Now, now you have to understand something. That everybody has their own idea about God. I was listening to an interview, and they went on the streets. They said, uh, do, you believe, do you believe there's a God? And it was just a, a Christian organization. They just went out on the street. It was, it was in Rome, and they said, do you believe there's a God? And they went up to one guy and says, I, re I really never thought about it. And he said, well, do you believe there's a God? Another person said, yeah, I believe there's a God. He said, well, do you believe that there's a God? Another guy said, well, it could be. Who knows? I don't know. It might, might be. It might not be. I have no idea. Well, do you believe in God? So I say, no, I don't believe in God. See, you, people have their own ideals about God. And, and so King Nebuchadnezzar had his own idea about God. He says, I'm going to throw you in the fiery furnace. And what God could possibly save you from what I'm about to do? See, King Nebuchadnezzar, because of the way he was raised and groomed, he had an ego the size of Texas. You ever been to Texas? Everything is huge in Texas. His ego is like, there can possibly be no God that can save you from my ego the size of Texas. And so if you want to live, I would advise you, once you hear the music, to bow down and worship the golden image. He says, King, we can't do it. Last chance. We can't do it. Threw them in the fire. King says, now I want every one of you who are watching to take notice of what will happen if any of you decide not to bow down and worship my golden image. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, into the fire. They threw him into the fire. King just turned his head, twiddled his thumbs, he waited for him. He smelled something burning. Those were the guards. They weren't supposed to die. He watched a little longer. They're walking around, fire blazing. Then they start talking to each other. I mean, we tried to tell this fool <laughs> that our God could save us. After a while, the king said, wait a minute. Didn't I throw three into the fire? But I see a fourth person in the fire. How did a fourth person get into the fire? But the king didn't know just because you saw a fire doesn't necessarily mean you've seen the light. You can go through some fiery experiences and not necessarily be able to comprehend the light. But the king said, there's a fourth one in the fire and he looks like the son of God. He's brighter than the fire that we turned up seven times higher to make sure that we could destroy the three Hebrew boys. What's going on? So they said, king... Hopefully you learned your lesson. King says, come on out. Let me see. King looked at him. He said, your hair is not even burned. The clothes we put on you, they not burned. Your toenails not burned. You didn't even get a tan from being in the fire. What in the world is going on? And he said, the God we serve. See, see. I, I want to leave you with, with just a few things. First of all, you got to know something about God that can keep you when the going gets tough. They knew something about God. Now, now watch what they knew about God. The first thing they knew they knew that God is able. 
that, that's it. They just knew that God is able. So when you are in a difficult situation, you've got to make some tough decisions. Just know something about God. First of all, that there is a God and that there, the God that you serve. And that's the other thing they said. The God we serve. That ain't the same God you serve. Sometimes people can serve what they think is God, but it is nothing to do with the God that we have been taught about. Not the God that you have learned to trust and to worship. Nothing about that God. They said the God we serve. And the other thing is you got to put yourself in the right position with God. They didn't say the God who serves us. We can't tell God how to do his business. But when you put yourself under God, then it's the God that you serve. Then God can do with your life whatever he chooses to do with your life to bring glory to his name. So when you find yourself in a difficult situation, a challenging situation, when cir circumstances turn upside down, just know that God is able and God is going to use the circumstances to bring glory to his name. It might be difficult while you're in it. It might be difficult coming to it. It might even be difficult to acknowledge it. But when you know God, God is able. That's the first thing. Now, now watch. You won't ever find out the second thing about God until you understand the first thing about God. You got to know that God is able before you find out that God is awesome. Oh, you missed that. You missed that. You can't talk about how awesome God is if you've never put yourself in a position to let God demonstrate, demonstrate and display his awesomeness. Look, look, at, look at verse, look at verse, I want to take you to verse 17. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is what? He is able. Now I want you to check out verse 24. But suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, didn't we tie up three and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did. They're, 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 they replied, look, Nebuchadnezzar, said, I see four men of unbound walking around in the fire, unharmed, and the fourth looks like a god. God is awesome, awesome. That means that God will blow your mind if you trust him. But you can't trust him unless you know that he's able to bring you through what you find yourself in in the middle of your circumstances. It doesn't matter what they are, but if you are able to say, I am going to serve God no matter what, God will start to show himself in ways that will blow your mind. You'll say, oh, where did that come from? I would have never known that God could have delivered me if I hadn't put myself in a situation where I had to trust God with all of my heart and lean not into my own understanding. In times of sickness, when I don't have all that I need, I had to trust him and I discovered that God is awesome. And when you discover that God is awesome, God is able, God is awesome. Now, this might not be all that good English, but God is all that. God is all that. I mean, he's all that. You name it and God is all that. I need deliverance. God is all that. I need a breakthrough. God is all that. I need to be lifted up. God is all that. I need peace in my mind. God is all that. I need a little bit more love in my heart. God is all that. I've got to get over the past and forgive somebody who's holding me back. God is all that. I got an anger issue and I can't control my temper. God is all that. There is no limit 
to what God can do. God is all that. Look at verse 28. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I, I bet you he was saying, man, I should have paid better attention in that religion class. They told me there was another God, but I didn't pay attention. I flunked my religion class. But guess what? God will put you in a situation, even if you flunk your religion class, he'll put you in a situation where you're going to have to learn how to trust him because every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And you will at some point find yourself having to confess that Jesus is Lord. Then he said, he sent his angels to rescue his servants who trusted in him. Listen, they defiled the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their own. Therefore, See, when other folks see how determined and how committed and how you are willing to trust God in every situation, therefore, they will discover the awesomeness of God because God will bring you through in such a way that others will see that nobody could have brought you through what you went through except that it had been the hand of God. I make this decree, if any people, whatever their race or nation or language, speak a word against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, well, it didn't go, it, didn't, it was something like that. They will be torn limb from limb, and their houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. There is no other God who can rescue like this. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to even higher positions in the province of his beloved Babylon. See, what am I saying? I'm saying, young people... That when you know something about God for yourself, it will keep you. When you know that God is able, it might look difficult and dark and hard, but God is able. He can get you through it. And just like the dance Melodic dance showed us through song and dance. I'm wiser. I'm better. I'm stronger. But I never could have made it without God. So here's what I want to leave you with. The reason they were able to have this level of conviction is because they grew up in a place that taught them how to love God. That's the reason. They, they, they probably would have been members of Cornerstone. If they had grown up in this era because somebody told them that even though I like basketball or lacrosse or video games the most important thing you need to know about me is that I love the Lord I love the Lord. 
I love the Lord. And when it was time, they could say, he heard my cry. And when they thought about it, that they were, had to go and stand before the king, they began to pray. And they say, and he pitied every groan. Long as I live, King Nebuchadnezzar, and troubles rise, I know a place. You, you know, Mario said, if you, if you come to this church and you have some problems, he said, you can get them solved right here. When troubles rise, I will hasten to his throne. See, whatever comes, just remember that God is able. And if you trust him, hold on. Don't give out you will discover that he's also awesome. He's full of awe. He will blow your mind. You, you, you eyes have not seen, nor have ears heard what God is really able to do. Then, as you walk through the storm and hold your head up high, yeah. Yeah. didn't say the winds wouldn't blow. Didn't say you wouldn't go through the storm. But he said, their God sent angels to deliver them. Don't you know that all night, and all day, you've got some angels watching over you. You may never know how much your prayers may make a difference in the lives of those that we love. So I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. And if you are able, in the section where you are, if you could just join hands with the person to your left or to your right, in the section where you are, just your section. God, we pause today first with a spirit of gratitude that we are here today. That we arrived at this place on the 30th of June 2019. But we've been through some things. Father, we've had some challenges. We've endured some trauma. We've caused pain in the lives of others. But thank you that we are here right now. And in this moment, you desire to empower us with your word. 
that says, trust me, I'm able. So whoever is going through a dark moment right now, a difficult situation, God put it into their spirit, into their mind, into their soul. From the crown of their head to the very soles of their feet, penetrate them with your word that tells them that you are able. There is nothing too hard for God. Somebody almost gave up this week. Almost threw in the towel. Didn't see how they could keep on pressing on. But let them be reinvigorated with your Holy Spirit and speak to them right now and let them know not to give up for the darkest hour is just before dawn and weeping may endure for a night but joy will come in the morning. Tell them that you are able to turn darkness into light. Sadness into rejoicing. Now, God, that you have allowed your spirit to connect with us and empower us with this faith. This week, even right now, even right now, even this day, show yourself as the awesome God that you are. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for being such an awesome God. And thank you, God, for bringing forth deliverance in this place right now. Thank you, God, for bringing forth awakening right now. Thank you, God, for bringing forth strength right now. Thank you, God, for bringing forth peace right now. Thank you, God. For bringing forth joy right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Then, oh God, as we bow before your throne of grace, we beseech that you would deposit in our hearts the truth of your word. that you are all that. As you revealed yourself to Moses, I am that I am. I am that I am. I, I am that I am. That, that I am means that I'm all that. I am that I am all that you need. I am all that. All that you are desiring. I am all that you need. I am all that I am. And, and God, remind us each and every day that you are who you said you are. So we surrender. We surrender to you. We put ourselves in right alignment with you not beside you we can't tell you what to do we can't tell you how to fix it we can't tell you which direction which door to open we can't tell but God we're putting ourselves in alignment with your will for our lives that we are under you and that we look to you and we receive what you desire to do in our lives as your perfect will for our lives you might do it, but you might not do it. It doesn't matter if you do or you don't. It's going to always work out for the good of those who love you because we're called according to your purpose. And we will always emerge as more than conquerors because we place our faith and our trust in you. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Deposit your praise right now for the blessing that you're anticipating. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out, Hallelujah! 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 Thank you. Now, Father, thank you for the light of the world. your son Jesus who came to show us the way anyone present today walking in darkness without the assurance of salvation without the assurance of being made right with God without the assurance of knowing that one there is a God because anyone who comes to you must first believe that you are if anyone is doubting, oh God, open hearts right now. Oh God, open minds that we would not rely upon our reason, but that we would trust your word. Your word tells us that you so loved us, that you so loved us, that you so loved us that even while we were in the throes of the thick of fire, you so loved us that you came into the fire to walk alongside us, to deliver us out of the fire unto salvation. So we pray for salvation, God. Salvation in this place. Touch the hearts of those who desire salvation, that they might come forth from that place of fire to the place of deliverance and light. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Our hearts say amen. 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 amen.